Hello, my name is Mike McCarthy, and I'm the director of the data science program at Utica College. And today we're going to talk about metadata. Metadata, at its essence, is just data on data. Whenever we have a data set, there should be some metadata that helps us understand the context of that data. The metadata should help us answer these key questions. The who, the what, the where, the when, and the how. Specifically, we want to answer who collected the data. We want to answer who is the data collected for? Who paid to have this data collected? What is the purpose of the data? What are the units for the different variables there? Is it pesos? Is it dollars? Is it yen? Is it a weight in kilograms? Is it a weight in pounds? Those will make a big difference. Where was it collected? Was it for a specific geographic region, a specific population? When? There is several different wins when it comes to data. When was it collected? Was it over a period of time? Was it all at one moment? When was it released? And how? Was it a survey? Maybe I should understand the survey questions. Was it a scrape from the internet? Or was it a machine that automatically generated this data for analysis? Now, metadata comes in many different ways. Sometimes it's a totally separate document. It could be a text file. A lot of times they're just called metadata or read me. Sometimes it's a whole separate web page dedicated to the metadata of a data set. Sometimes it's at the top of a data set. Sometimes you'll see it at the bottom. And we have to make sure that as we go through our, our data set that we look for metadata wherever it might be. Now there is a gold standard for metadata and it's the Census Bureau. They do an excellent job of being transparent and let's take a closer look. So I want to start here at the Census Bureau webpage. And for this example, we're going to look at the American Community Survey, the ACS. And right here on the web page, there is a whole tab about technical documentation. And so there's codes and definitions, user notes, errata, which means how things have changed or updated. We have all sorts of other ways to learn more about the data we download. So if I download one data element, I actually get four separate documents. The first one, is actually the text document that is lots of metadata. This is a huge uh, multi-paragraph explanation of just about everything you'd ever want to know about that particular file. Now, there's not to say we shouldn't read the metadata that's on the web page, but this is specifically about the median dollar values from the B25077 value for the universe of the owner-occupied housing units. It's very specific. Now, if I click on this next one, it says metadata in it, you'll see that the file actually has the different names that correspond to each variable. This is sort of the shortened abbreviated name that's very standardized, and this is the explanation. And if I go ahead and, and I open up the data itself with annotations, you see that both lines have the names and the uh, short and abbreviated names as well as the data. So this is, and these are the sort of things we need to figure out. What do those double asterisks mean? The metadata will tell me. And lastly, here's the quintessential readme file. This really talks about the downloads and what to expect of the downloads and how there are four documents with each download. One, two, three, and four, and what to expect with each one. So this is the gold standard for metadata. Thanks for listening today. I hope you learned a lot about metadata. Have a great day.